Here's a big one, Isaiah 9, 6. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah 9, 6. Again, what I love about the book of Isaiah, we talked about it, the Dead Sea Scrolls, we know this is the way the verse goes because when they discovered it, dated to 250 BC, it's the same words. What you have in your Bible matches this. So Isaiah 9, 6 says, <clears throat> Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, so we just went through Isaiah 7. Now it's getting into Isaiah 9. I, the chapter 9 starts with, oh, by the way, this light of the world will come out of Galilee. And then just a few verses later, it describes who this person will be. And this is a description. So you got, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, that's Peleos. That's a Hebrew name for God. And God is called a wonder. When you read in Judges 13, 18, it says, why do you ask my name, seeing it is Pele, a wonder? He calls himself a name that refers to mystery. Right? So you have here this miraculous virgin-born child. Actually, is Pele Yotz, God himself. He's a wonder. It's a mystery. It's, the, it's, it's God Almighty. Then you have mighty God, El Gabor. This is literally now this child being born, who will one day be given as a son, is El Gabor. Jeremiah 32, 18 uses the same phrase, the great, the mighty God, whose name is the Lord of hosts. This is literally pointing that Jesus Christ is God. Follow me? Then you've got this idea of everlasting father, of Hayab. This is John 14, 9. Literally, the son who's born in the cradle is equal to God the Father. The same. So you're seeing this in Isaiah in 730 BC, which we know is exactly where it was written. Christians didn't add this to the Bible later. It was there in the beginning, saying that this son is God. Prince of Peace is my favorite one. This means in the Hebrew, Sar Shalom. This is about this one called the general. So the word in the Hebrew for Prince of Peace is like the general who oversees. He's the one who oversees your confidence you have in your hearts by restoring peace between yourself and the Father through the cross. You ever think of the difference between peace of God and peace with God? If someone were to say to you, you have the peace of God, what would you think of? Right, right. He lives in you. What about peace with God? That implies you can have peace, not peace with God. <laughs> so it implies. How does someone have peace with God? There's been a tr truce, a treaty. Romans 5 1. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father, Psalm 89, 14, his throne is on a foundation of justice and righteousness, right? So what happens is, in order for him to justify you, to say that you are just in his sight, his justice has to be satisfied. He satisfies his justice on the cross, and that's why the veil's torn in two, and that's why Jesus says it's finished. The Father is satisfied that his justice has been taken care of. He's still not satisfied with you as an individual. <laughs> right? Everything that's necessary now for him to be at peace, that justice has been done, was accomplished on the cross. Now he's like, finally. That's why when you hear in um, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, and you have this thing called Abraham's bosom, and you have separation there. 
No one can be in the presence of God the Father until the Son dies on the cross. Because justice hasn't been completely fulfilled. You can still be a Christian by faith, but you can't be with the Father until the way has been made. So now, with peace with God is Romans 5.1. God now can look on you as right and just and at peace with you as a child because you trust in the one who set the foundation for God in Psalm 89.14 and his justice. He's fulfilled it. Does that mean that the people who died before Christ that had faith like Abraham didn't pop into heaven until Christ died? Right. In order to be with God, what's the requirement? Um, a payment has to be made. In order to be physically with God the Father, the payment has to be made that satisfies his holiness. Right? When Jesus shows up, when he's in John 1 29, when it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So in other words, he hasn't taken them away yet. <laughs> It hasn't happened yet. The way it happens is him on the cross, and the blood pays for all sin. The problem is you can still go to hell because the, you got to think in terms of who he is, not who you are. The father is sitting there going, I am at enmity with people. There's a tension here. You people all suck. You people are horrible. You can't be in my presence. It's not possibly in God's presence. I've said this before. He cannot forgive you. I keep saying this. He can't until his son. The minute his son achieves on the cross the only means of forgiveness, the father says, now the veil toward tears in two. Guess what? You are now able to access me. But until then, nope. That's who the father is. It's perfection. Does this make sense? It's a big deal, right? So this is what's going on here. He accomplishes this. One of the, uh, I know I got to end. Uh, we'll end on this. Isaiah 32, 17. These are these little verses that just kill me. They're so, for me, they're so special because I see what he's saying. Who's got um, Isaiah 32, 17? Anybody have it? Any effect? And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. All right, you got to talk louder. As loud as you can. Just okay. bail it out. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. Okay. She, it's, mine says the work of righteousness, but that's okay. The effect of righteousness is what? Peace. Okay. Somebody does righteous, righteous work that results in peace. See what that's saying? Isaiah 53, for the chastisement of our peace was upon him. There's somebody in this verse, because of what they do, results in peace. Then, the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever, you go from peace with God to peace of God. This is what he was just talking about with the Holy Spirit. When you know Jesus Christ and you have trusted in what he's achieved on the cross to bring you peace, guess how you feel on the inside? Quiet and assured. You know it. Nobody can shake you. Nobody can take away what you have. Because Jesus did it. And so you look at people and go, oh really? I win, guys. Sorry, I win. You know why? Because of what Jesus Christ did. So that verse is showing you, here's what he did, here's what you get. 